Alexander Graham Bell's telephone, an American invention that changed the world. Today, despite the fact that over 4.7 billion people use a mobile phone, just under 50% of people still use a landline. 50 years ago, nearly everyone owned and used a landline, an invention of the late 1870s that revolutionized communication systems. So, how did one man's crazy idea become such an integral part of our daily lives? The answer to that specific question in just a bit, but first, some background on the man who invented the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell was born in 1847 in Edinburgh, Scotland, and immigrated to the U.S. in 1871. This fits in with Key Concept 6.21a, which mentions a continued growth in immigrants from Asia and Europe. In 1870, he devoted his career to teaching and helping the hearing impaired in Boston, reflecting his fascination with the transmission of sound. While in Boston, he continued to work on his prototype of the telephone with funding from various investors. Finally, just before the end of the Reconstruction era and during the Second Industrial Revolution in 1876, Alexander Graham Bell was granted the first U.S. patent for the telephone. When Bell performed the first phone call, his assistant, Thomas Watson, heard his famous message, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. Bell's first model was so heavy it could not be picked up and would only transmit sound a short distance of around two miles, but quickly proved to be a revolutionary invention. Although Alexander Graham Bell is credited for the invention of the telephone, many other inventors and scientists have contributed to telecommunications technology. German scientist Johann Philipp Rice and Italian-American Antonio Meucci were both reported to have had telephone prototypes before Bell filed for a patent. Fun fact, hours after Bell left the U.S. Patents Office in 1876, his competitor, Alicia Gray, filed a caveat, or a declaration of intent, for his telephone model. After many legal cases filed against Bell closed, he was awarded the patent. The standard telephone model has been bits and pieces of different inventors and scientists' work added together. In 1896, Alvin B. Stroger developed the rotary dial, and in 1882, Charles Williams Jr. introduced a wall-mounted design. Even Thomas Alva Edison contributed a carbon transmitter to the telephone model. With the invention of the telephone, a whole new industry of telecommunications was born. By 1886, over 100,000 people owned a telephone. In 1877, Bell founded the Bell Telephone Company, which later evolved in 1885 into the American Telegraph and Telephone Company more commonly known as AT&T. With telephones becoming household electronics, communication was no longer limited to Morse code via telegraphs or handwritten letters. Telephone exchanges began to open as more communities adopted the telephone. A telephone exchange is a communication network in which an operator would manually plug in different phone lines from a communication center to connect calls via switchboards. In 1878, the first exchange was opened in New Haven, Connecticut, where 21 phone lines from the neighborhood were connected. The first instance of the telephone being used commercially was when it was installed in the houses of clients for a burglar alarm company in 1877. The growing telecommunications industry called for an increase in workers to operate switchboards and install telephones in homes. This increase in demand for workers led to the employment of many women relating to Key Concept 7.11b regarding increased economic opportunities for women. 38 years after the first phone call in Boston, the first transcontinental phone call was sent by Bell in New York City to Watson in San Francisco and took 23 minutes to connect via five different switchboard operators. International calls became possible in the late 1950s when the first submarine transatlantic telephone cable connected various European countries with North America. Initially, there were many mixed responses to the telephone. Some proclaimed the telephone to be the most innovative instrument of the 19th century. Others remarked the telephone would eliminate social interaction and the need to speak face to face, and would not become popular. In 1876, President Rutherford B. Hayes commented, that's an amazing invention, but who would ever want to use one of them? If only he knew.